there in front of me being here I, oh I won't spin it around that way can I spin it around this way there she is and uh, we're glad you're here today so welcome and uh, those of you who are legalistic in time frames like I am I'm sorry we're late but that's okay we'll get over it it was the computer's fault it was the computer's fault all right I guess I didn't have to put you it on. You didn't really have to do that because they could have heard me the first yeah, time. Now you heard me twice. You, you look good on TV. Thank you. All right. So anyway, um, now just to, <clears throat> as an announcement for the church, and again, we have been blessed with gorgeous Wednesdays. I have to tell you um, <clears throat> for doing this. And uh, I just as a heads up, I do have a book planned for next week, and next week will probably be our last book reading. And uh, all of a sudden now the camera's gone and my picture's gone and I have easy YouTube video and music and there's an update and I have no clue what that all means. Um, so, hi again. I think you're still back. I think you're back. All you're right. still good. So, exciting things <laughs> happening in technology here. <laughs> But uh, so here we go for an announcement uh, for the church. Uh, encourage you for Vacation Bible School for sign up. Um, if you're on Facebook, you should know how to get to the church's Facebook page. And there you'll have the actual information for uh, signing up. And so we encourage you to do that um, online so you can be part of that. And all I can tell you is... When it comes to technology, I am so excited that I don't have to be responsible for it. Um, oh, there we go. The Dornings told me I never left the screen. Oh, I good. left the screen, though, but I appreciate oh, you telling me that. <laughs> um, so then also, just as an announcement also, um, we will be opening church um, on July 5th. Um, and I will have more information about that, how that's going to happen. But we are planning an 8 o'clock service, fully masked, uh, except for the pastor and our organist, because we don't want either one of them to faint or go down. Um, and then at 10 o'clock. And then also we'll continue to record and hopefully be able to post. We can't go live from the church because of our internet strength. Um, so anyway, that's I'll have more details for that on Sunday. Um, so today's story that I'm going to read um, actually comes from the Gospel of John, and I'm going to read John chapter 6, verses 3 through 13. And, um, and then uh, the author, uh, Anthony De Stefano, uh, came up with a book called The Miracle of the Bread, the Fish, and the Boy, and basically what he did is he took the Bible story and kind of gave us a little novelesque approach to how it all may have happened. So, but let me read from the Gospel of John. Then Jesus went up on the mountainside and sat down with his disciples. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will that go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled twelve baskets with the pieces of five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. And I can show that picture from that page. So, Anthony... De, Ste De Stefano, the miracle of the bread, the fish, and the boy. Seven dollars and forty-seven cents. The little boy could hardly believe it. He looked down and counted the money again. Seven forty-seven. And he had saved it all by himself. 
It had taken him a long time, but he had managed to do it by helping people in town carry their packages, by doing extra chores around the house, and by never spending even a penny of the tiny allowance his mother gave him. He had saved the money for one reason, to buy his mother a special present for her birthday. You see, the little boy lived in a fishing village, by a lake, with only his mother and brothers. He had no father, and his family was very poor. His mother had to work long hours just to put food on the table. But one day, the boy had an idea. If he could save enough money, maybe he could buy his family a week's worth of food. And his mother would be able to stay at home for a few days and rest her tired feet. So the boy saved his pennies and nickels for months. Finally, on the morning of his mother's birthday, he got up extra early just as the sun was rising and walked to the village market by himself. If only I can buy the food and bring it back home before my mother wakes up, he thought. So she'll be so surprised. When he got to the food market, he went straight through the door and reached up high to put his money on the counter. Then he boldly said to the shopkeeper, May I have a week's worth of fish and bread, please? The shopkeeper was a mean-looking old man. He counted the money slowly and said in a grumpy, gravelly voice, That is only seven forty-seven, seven dollars and forty cents. You expect to buy a week's worth of food with this? Why not, asked the boy. Isn't that enough? The old man squinted his eyes and growled, Why, it's hardly any money at all! He turned around and walked to the back of the store. In a few seconds, he returned with two fish and five small loaves of bread. He plopped them down on the counter in front of the boy. That's all your money will buy, he said harshly. But that's not even enough for dinner, the boy protested. That's all your money will buy, the man grumbled as he turned away from the boy. The boy left the shop feeling heartbroken. He carried the fish and bread in a small basket under his arm, his head hanging low. Now what am I going to do, he sobbed. I worked so hard, I thought I had saved up a treasure. But now I don't have any money and hardly any food, and my mother won't be able to stay home from work even one day. I'm just a failure. Just as the boy walked home, he noticed a crowd of people gathering a short distance away. There were old people, young people, rich people, poor people, sick people, handicapped people, thousands of people. And all of them were making their way up the side of a large sloping hill. The boy asked someone, well, what's all the commotion about? Haven't you heard? The great teacher from Nazareth is here, and he's healing the sick and preaching about God. The boy strained his neck, but couldn't see over the heads of the crowd. In fact, the swarm was so thick that he could barely move. So crouching low, he began to go through the people's legs because he was so small. He was able to move quickly, and before long, he was close to the edge of the crowd.
When he finally peeked out from under someone's robe, he saw the great teacher sitting on a rock. The sun was behind him, and he seemed to be carved out of the light. The boy listened to the man speak. He didn't sound like most other adults. The boy knew his words were so simple, and yet they seemed so wise. Just then, one of the men who was with the teacher saw the boy and pulled him up by his sleeves. He brought him over to the teacher and said, Lord, this boy has five loaves of bread and two fish. The teacher looked down and said, little boy, there are thousands of people here and they are very hungry. Will you give me your bread and fish so I can feed them? The boy was confused. But 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 how how can you do that? He asked. This food that I bought isn't even enough to give my family. How can it feed this big crowd? The teacher smiled gently and spoke to him in a quiet voice. Little boy, don't you know that with God all things are possible? Don't you know that if you offer everything you have to God, he will multiply all the good things you do? The boy remembered what his mother had taught him about God. He nodded his head and answered, Yes, I know that God can do anything. The teacher stretched out his hand and asked the boy once again for his basket of bread and fish. The boy thought for a second and decided to trust the man. He gave him all that he had. The man took the food and said a short prayer of thanks. He told the crowds to sit down, laid the basket on the ground, then he closed his eyes. Suddenly, the boy heard a low, rumbling sound. It started quietly, but it grew louder and louder. Soon it seemed as if the earth was shaking under his feet. Just then the boy noticed that instead of one basket of bread and fish, there were two, and then there were four, then eight, then ten. In no time at all, there were hundreds of baskets on the ground containing thousands of fish and loaves of bread. The boy couldn't believe his eyes. It was a miracle. The men who were standing near the teacher then began to give the food to the people in the crowd. Everyone ate until they were full. When they were finally done, there were 12 baskets of bread and fish left over. Then the teacher said to the boy, Remember, without God you can do nothing. But when you pray and ask God for help, he will bless all that you do and give you the power to do incredible things. Before going back home, the boy stopped at the lake in his village and thought about what had happened. He didn't have any money, or bread, or fish, or a present for his mother. He should have felt sad, but for some reason he didn't. 
He had seen a great miracle and was happy to have helped the teacher feed thousands of people. I only wish I had a small gift for my mom, he thought. But when he got home, an amazing surprise awaited him. His mother rushed over to him in excitement. She pointed to a huge basket of bread and fish in the corner. Some men came by just now and dropped this basket. It's, no, it's enough food to last a whole month. The men told me that they were giving it to you because you helped them today. The boy remembered the leftover baskets of food and smiled. He looked at his mother and said, It's not for me, Mom. It's for you. It's your birthday present. Now you can finally stay home from work and rest a while. His mother had tears of joy in her eyes. This is the best present anyone has ever given me, she said. And she hugged her son tightly. When I first read this story, uh, just the other day, and I thought about the miracle and Sue and I actually talked about it also afterwards and I said I never really gave it any thought of how Jesus produced the fish and the bread knew about the miracle but I always wondered how it happened and so Anthony De, St De Stefano I'll get this name right uh, somewhere along the line but at, for him at one time came up with just a, a great story and the importance for each of us is, is are we willing to say yes to Jesus? When he asks us to do things for him, or when our parents ask things of us to do for them. Sometimes we forget that just obeying our parents is obeying Jesus. Or just helping like we're called to do to others, to reaching out to others, um, how important that is to simply say yes. And when we say yes, then we have the opportunity to be the miracle, to experience God's presence through us as we reach out to others, as we obey God, as we do what God tells us and calls us to do. So, Next week, I already have picked out a book. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You'll have to tune in probably on Monday or Tuesday when I give that book uh, information and it gets posted, but I am looking forward to it. Um, and so I'm glad that we could be together. And uh, let me go ahead and close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the miracle that you did on that hillside off the Sea of Galilee. And that, Father, you were there, and you just simply said, I'll take what they have, and I will multiply it. Remind us, Lord, to be like the little boy, to step up in faith. Remind us, Lord, to be like the disciples, not the part where they go ahead and say, well, how can we feed everybody? But, Lord, to take what you give us and give that to others, to reach out to others. I pray this, this day, Lord, just from for those who are sick. I happen to be have somebody in mind, Lord, and I just pray for the healing that they so desire. And so, Father, I'm not going to mention a name, but, Father, it's just asking for that, Lord. It's cancer, and they really want to be healed for that, Lord. And we want to claim a miracle for them. We want that healing. So, again, bless us, Lord, and we look forward to worshiping together online on Sunday. We do this in Christ's name. Amen. Well, God bless you and have a great day. Enjoy yourself. 
And uh, we'll see you Sunday online. there too. I forgot we had this camera and I